Hello everyone, now we are going to talk about UNESCO's Man in the Biosphere program. My name is Eric Aschenbrand, I am Professor for International Nature Conservation and Social Ecological Sustainability Processes in UNESCO Biosphere Reserves and I'm working at Eberswald University for Sustainable Development. Now I want to time travel with you more than 50 years back to the year 1968. This was the time of the student protests of the civil rights movement and of the hippie movement. And in this very year, this amazing picture was taken called the Earthrise and showing the Earth from outer space, looking very small and very vulnerable. And it was said to be the most influential environmental photograph ever taken. Um, in that year, the Club of Rome was founded, who would later publish its report Limits to Growth. And there was a conference taking place in Paris called Intergovernmental Conference of Experts on the Scientific Basis of Rational Use and Conservation of the Resources of the Biosphere. And the result of this conference was the creation of UNESCO's MAB program, which started in 1971. But it was not the only event of this year, as the Ramsar Convention was agreed on in 1971 and also it is the founding year of Greenpeace. Greenpeace was also founded in 1971. Uh, just one year later in 1972 there was the Stockholm Environmental Conference with its outcome the Stockholm Declaration which is regarded as marking the birth of the modern environmental movement. So I believe it is fair to agree with this quote saying that the Man in the Biosphere program was created in a climate of general awakening to all manner of environmental concern. And what was the vision of the MAB program then? The idea was to create an intergovernmental and interdisciplinary scientific program which combined rational use with nature conservation. And the 1968 conference. Um, its result were 14 project areas, only one of which were the biosphere reserves. And um, the idea, the concept of biosphere reserves was clarified in 1974. The biosphere reserves should form an international network of sites for conservation, for research and for education and training and they should contain pristine sites as well as areas characterized by human use, but also degraded sites, which was quite in innovative for a protected area approach at that time. And so in short, the idea was to, um, to have sites, biosphere reserves containing representative ecosystems. And in these biosphere reserves, the idea was that there um, we could understand widespread environmental challenges in the biosphere reserves and learn um, um, how, to, how to manage these sites and, and gain learnings that could, be, could spread from the biosphere reserves. The model of zoning of biosphere reserves that we still have today is sometimes referred to as the fried egg model. It emerged as the most popular concept for biosphere reserves in the 1980s. And the zones uh, are showing different degrees of human activity. In the middle, you have the, in the green color, you have the core area, which is only about nature conservation, where nature conservation is the main purpose. Um, around that, you have a buffer zone. And then you also have this transition area, which was also very innovative at that time. The transition area um, has the goal of social development, of economic, sustainable economic development. And an idea is also that you have this gradient, uh, these different degrees of human activities within these zones. So um, that biosphere reserves are well designed to learn about different effects of uh, human activity on biodiversity.
And subsequently, within the MIB program, the biosphere reserves emerged as the most important point, and the other project areas were either integrated or subsequently reduced. And there were some important milestones for the MIB program, one of which was the 1992 Earth Summit, which was very important to the whole environmental movement with its results, the Convention on Climate Change, the Convention on Biological Diversity, as well as the Agenda 21. And for the MIB program, the question was how to position biosphere reserves in this new global imperative. And the result was the civil strategy um, the outcome of the Seville Conference of 1995. The Seville strategy defined biosphere reserves as regional units of sustainable development and it coined a new, new term, the world network of biosphere reserves. There was a statutory framework for this world network agreed which codified the designating and reviewing processes and also the functions and zoning. Of biosphere reserves. Another important milestone was the Madrid Action Plan agreed in 2008, which related the biosphere reserves to the Millennium Development Goals. And this Madrid Action Plan was evaluated in 2013, um, and the result of the evaluation was that many biosphere reserves are rather disconnected from this world network of biosphere reserves. So the imperative was, the idea then was to strengthen the functioning of the world network of biosphere reserves. And the most recent milestone is the Lima Action Plan agreed in 2016, which very much focuses on, on qualifying the world network of biosphere reserves, the functioning of this network and the management of the biosphere reserves themselves. So today, the vision for biosphere reserves is a world where people are conscious of their common future and interaction with our planet and act collectively and responsibly to build thriving societies in harmony within the biosphere. So as you can see, it's a very ambitious vision. And um, the idea is to develop the biosphere reserves as models and as learning places for sustainable development from which the ideas, new ideas that are created there can spread. And as you can see, it's very much related to the sustainable development agenda. Now, as the last step in this short introduction to UNESCO's MAB program, I want to look at how this program is governed. But please be aware, what I'm going to show you now is not any um, official UNESCO organigram, but it's just my own drawing to illustrate the governance of the MAP program. So there is the biennial, biennial general conference of UNESCO. And this conference elects 34 member states to form the International Coordinating Council of the Men and Biosphere program. And this is the main governing body for the program. And this uh, council meets annually, and it also elects five chairpersons who form the MAB Bureau, which has the authority of the ICC in between the meetings, as the delegates cannot work continuously in this, within this ICC. So then we have an international advisory committee on biosphere reserves, which provides scientific and technical advice to the ICC. And of course, we have a secretariat um, with UNESCO in Paris, the MAB secretariat. Um, it facilitates the communication, the cooperation, the whole um, interaction within um, this network of the within, like between the different bodies of this network. And it, of course, it's 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 the secretariats of international programs or um, treaties are always very important as the brains or Wikipedias of this whole process. And then we have the national MAB committees. They implement the MAB program in the member states and they are, for example, responsible for the evaluation process of biosphere reserves. And then, of course, we have the biosphere reserves on the ground. Most importantly, 
the biosphere reserves, they are not managed directly by UNESCO, but they are managed within the member states. So there are authorities within the member states um, that manage biosphere reserves. And the, it, is, it is important here to note that the biosphere reserve remains under the jurisdiction of the member state. And the biosphere reserves, they cooperate in regional and in thematic sub-networks. For example, there's a network on marine and coastal biosphere reserves. And these regional and thematic networks really, um, uh, yeah, they make up the word network of biosphere reserves. And this is how it functions. And now, as a last, very last step, I would like to show you how this structure works. Um, with an example, which is the nomination process for new biosphere reserves. So if a state wants to designate a new biosphere reserve, it forwards the nomination through the National MIB Committee to the Secretariat. Um, the Secretariat verifies the content and, if necessary, requires missing information from the member state. And then once the uh, application is complete, it is forwarded to the International Advisory Committee, which considers the nomination and provides a recommendation to the ICC, which will then decide on the nomination. Yeah, and then in the end, we have a new biosphere reserve. So this was a very short introduction to the Man and Biosphere program of UNESCO. Thank you very much for watching and bye bye.